What's up guys, it's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in Denver, Colorado, and today I'm going to be moving on to part two of my Cordyceps 2.0 project. So last week, um, we inoculated a bunch of different substrate recipes with a wild UK Cordyceps strain. So it's about five days in, and you can see it's got some really nice colonization. Um, so I selected this um, jar to replicate just because it has you know really healthy growth and compared to the other jars it colonized um, the first I don't know if it's just because there is slightly more liquid culture but I really like the thickness of this substrate um, so I used a third cup of rice and 40 grams of milk I um, dialed that in a little bit differently so I actually use um, a little bit less than a third cup and a little bit more so I, I think I did um, 30 grams of rice and 50 grams of milk for these substrates that's what I did so 30 grams of rice 50 grams of milk and then I pressure cooked it for um, 20 minutes this time compared to 30 minutes because um, I thought that the caps were melting because of the, the length of time but someone on our previous video commented that the, the lids are actually um, a polypropylene 4 so you can see the little triangle right here with a 4 so that's why they melted the other lids are a polypropylene 5 so they're rated a little bit higher um, right there you can't really see it but the little triangle has a five in it um, so that's why the bottoms were able to withstand the pressure cooking and the, the lids ended up melting so moving forward I'm gonna be um, searching for some polypropylene five lids because I really like these uh, deli containers they're easy to work with and you can reuse them um, and they're, they have a nice big bottom compared to the uh, half pint jars that I was using previously. Um, but you can see, you know, five days, this strain already colonized this. This is going to go into fruiting. But this video is going to be testing the differences between strains. So um, it's a really, you know, new it's a new process um, relatively new compared to other gourmet um, mushrooms and there's a few really good uh, breeders out there um, I've got one strain from terrestrial fungi so they have a really good reputation um, this one is mound four number four BX one number five cross with GH number two and I got this on um, 12 28 20 from a friend of mine so uh, I'm gonna be inoculating this one against two of the strains that I bred um, previously on my first cordyceps project and then also I've got some more of the UK um, United Kingdom cordyceps that colonize really well there so this is a wild clone and then two of my back crosses, um, the C3, C3C10, and C3C8. And these are from September, so they're a little bit older. Um, I was told that the lifespan on these is not as long as a typical gourmet mushroom, so I had some other older cordyceps strains, but I'm not even gonna bother with those because my goal in this project is to create a really rigorous commercial strain so that I can scale up my production. So you can see um, in the background here, I'll bring it in a little closer. Um, I've got all my, my deli jars sterilized and ready. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do my inoculations um, just like last week. So these are the two that I bred in house. Um, these three are the wild cordyceps, and then this is the terrestrial fungi mound four crossed with GH 
Um, I'm not really sure on the the naming of this, but um, everyone's told me good things about terrestrial fungi, so I'm gonna try this one out. And then against a wild strain, and then the two that I bred. All right, guys, so first I'll just start off by sterilizing my hands. And in case you're wondering what that sound is, it's just my flow hood. So I like to use a vertical flow hood for doing culture work, um, just because you can spread out all of these different um, vessels and you know this one is going to be just as clean as this one here so it kind of levels out the laminar flow if you're using a vertical hood all right so the first so I've got 16 of these prepared and I'm going to try to do about five mils per deli container and I've also got some cordyceps that's spinning um, th that's the wild UK strain just because I know that I don't have enough syringes prepared already all right and then you can see that these lids that I made um, all I did was take um, saran wrap the cling wrap and then I parafilm the edge so that it would stay on so I really like these because you can see through them and you can watch the colonization but once I get the process down it won't be as much of an issue all right so I'm just going to also grab um, my micropore tape and I will start with the terrestrial fungi so once again inoculate I like to do a little circle and then a zigzag in the middle maybe I can stretch this out for three So for that one, I used four mils. I guess I should try to stretch all of them out for three, and that way I won't have to dip into my jar. All right, so this next one is C3C8. It's always good to mix up your liquid cultures so you get a nice homogenous blend This is just micro pore tape. Um, it's just breathable tape that will prevent contamination from getting in to where I just inoculated. But it still allows for some air exchange for the cordyceps to breathe. Before we get too far, I'm just going to label these terrestrial fungi and then today's date, which is the 29th. Alright, 
So I've got those inoculated. Now I'm gonna go on to the C3, C8. So C3, C8. So now I'm doing C3, C10. And one thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that the terrestrial fungi mycelium looked a lot denser and it looked um, a lot whiter than the strains that I bred. Um, the mycelium is kind of, you know, clear, more transparent. So that might be something to consider if you're breeding for cordyceps it seems like you know the terrestrial fungi was a lot whiter in color C3, C10. So, I always like to label before moving on to the next strain so that I don't get any of these confused. And for the rest of these, this is um, going to be the wild cordyceps strain from Kaizen Cordyceps. So shout out to Kaizen Cordyceps in the UK. last one I'll try to stretch out I'm just gonna label these real quick. guys so I just finished up my inoculations I'm going to put these in my incubator for um, at 72 degrees and hopefully in the next five or six days these will be colonized and I can move on to fruiting so the next differentiation factor um, for cordyceps is the telltale sign of the color change so I'll do an update on that for my next video and then I'm just going to compare um, the different yields on the same substrate between these different strains. And you know, if I'm not getting good yields, then I'm gonna go revisit my substrate and add some more nutrients. But the whole point of this um, video series was to make it really easy to grow cordyceps. So there, I know that there's a lot of 
you know, successful growers out there that have really complicated recipes and I kind of wanted to avoid that so when I scale it up um, it won't be a huge issue and it looks really healthy on my um, first trial of milk and rice so it's organic milk organic rice I'm gonna pop these into fruiting and I'll keep you guys updated um, give us a thumbs up if you enjoy these videos subscribe if you're looking forward to more videos like these um, check out our Etsy shop fresh fungi for live mycelium cultures we just stocked up um, on some liquid cultures we're gonna be doing some really cool projects in the spring I've been researching some mycorrhizal species um, specifically some ecto mycorrhizal um, mushrooms that um, normally people um, don't cultivate those because they require trees but I've been doing a lot of research and um, I'm gonna be presenting a new series probably starting in March or April um, of 2021 and I'm really excited about this so I'm gearing up for that which is kind of why I've been doing less um, projects but I wanted to get this cordyceps video out before I scaled up my production so Thanks again for watching. Um, check out our mu mushroom cultivation classes too if you're in the area. Um, we've been um, filling up our seats pretty quickly, but we still got some spots left on mushroomcult.net. And um, we're gonna be doing some online classes too. So check out mushroomcult.net for the schedule on that. And um, I think that's it. So until next time, much love.